Hello, my wonderful students. This is Mrs. Darmody, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use a broadcast message in your Scratch program. This is a very powerful tool that you can use to trigger one action or really multiple actions. There is no limit. So you can use a sending broadcast message with receiving broadcast message messages on an unlimited number of sprites and backdrops to trigger action in your program. So let's begin. So I'm going to call this broadcast example just because that's what it is. And I first want to explain that a broadcast message, like I said, is like a trigger. So it would almost be like if, a, if someone was standing out on a football field with a giant megaphone and there are a bunch of people milling around on the field and the person with the megaphone yelled out, okay, it's time to do your thing. But nobody knows what to do until the programmer, which is you, actually puts in code that tells all those people what to do when the person with the megaphone sends the message, which is the sending broadcast message. So in this example, we have a program with some sprites. We've got a couple of butterflies, a bug, the scratch cat, and a puppy with crazy eyes. So we want all of these characters in this scenario to do something all at the same time. Normally, you might use a series of weight blocks to make that happen, um, but that's very time consuming and you have to practice the wait times uh, over quite a bit to get the wait times exactly the way you want them. So there's a better way. So the first thing we want to do is determine where we start here. So for the scratch cat, we want him to start out in this location. And you can see that right now his x coordinate is negative 162. His y coordinate is number 107. So of course we want to make sure that that's where he starts out at the beginning of the program. And that's always good practice for any program that you make, that you always determine where each character, where each object, where each sprite will start out at the beginning of the program. Because once they start moving around and such, they may not be in that spot anymore. Okay, because there is no such thing as a reset block in Scratch. So now we go to this one, and this uh, Butterfly 2 is in this spot. So we want to go over and do the same thing when the green flag is clicked. This character is going to be in exactly this spot, and so on and so forth, that the character is going to be in this spot. And then once you do that, it puts everything exactly in that spot right at the beginning of the program. So now we know that's where they'll be. Now for the backdrops, um, we have two backdrops in here already. We have blue sky two and we have blue sky. So the question is, which backdrop do we want to show in the beginning? And we would like blue sky two. So we need to say that when the green flag is clicked, blue sky two will be the backdrop that shows up. So we have to choose it from the drop down menu. So now that basically is how you are setting up your program from the beginning. The backdrop showing up will be Blue Sky 2. And each of these sprites will be exactly in these XY positions that you have designated. So you basically create your own reset. OK, so now what about the broadcast message? So let's pretend that the blue sky 2 is going to show up as the backdrop. And then we might want the backdrop to be the one to send the message. You can really have any sprite or any backdrop send the trigger broadcast message. Um, I often like to put it on the backdrop just because that's almost like the neutral ground because it might because it might be sending those messages out to all the sprites. 
So I think we'll have it wait a couple of seconds. Um, so we'll go into control. We'll have it wait two seconds, let's say. And then it's going to send out a broadcast message. So this would be under the events category. And I'll go down to broadcast. Make this a little bit bigger so we can see. So you never want to leave it as a generic broad message one. Because later on, when you look at this program, you're not going to remember what that message was for. And in some cases, with more complex programs, you may have multiple broadcast message that, messages that you use to trigger different actions. So you always want to give, the, give it a name that kind of helps you remember what the purpose of the message is for, what, what actions it is you're trying to trigger. So in this case, I'm going to call it Sprite Stance because that's really what I want to happen and you don't want to leave any spaces in them in the name so sprite stance but now what now what do we want to do so in this case I'm still thinking of the backdrop for a moment um, once the back backdrop sends out that trigger message I think I want the backdrop to wait another second maybe and then I actually want that backdrop to switch to the other backdrop which is blue sky Okay, now, but what else is supposed to happen? Who's going to be receiving these broadcast messages? I think in this case, we want all of the sprites to receive the broadcast message. So we'll start with the Scratch Cat. When the Scratch Cat receives that broadcast message, leave Sprite Stance, what do we want the cat to do? Well, I think that we want him to switch costumes. We know he has multiple costumes. He's got his walking costume and his running costume. And when he switches his costumes, he may look like he's dancing. And we may want to have that repeat a few times. So we're going to bring over the repeat and we're going to go to looks and we're going to choose next costume. Now we want to test this out. It's always important to test your scripts one at a time to make sure that they are working properly before you go too far with this. So let's just check. We always click on the top block of the script to test it. Okay, he's dancing a little bit too fast, I think. So I might have a little wait time in there as well. Let's see what happens when I put this in here. Okay, that's a little too slow. I think we'll put 0.5 maybe. Let's try it now. That's still too slow. I think I'll make it 0.3. There he is, the dancing cat. So I like that. So now I think that I will put a similar code on each of the others because each of the other sprites does have more than one costume so i don't have to make my own um although i did make one already before this video so the butterfly has its own costumes i did make a, a costume for the beetle because the beetle didn't have a second costume so i made this uh before i started recording i just colored in his body with green lime green and then the cat the dog that i got i uh got that picture of from the internet um, he did not have his own costume so he made a second costume with crazy eyes all right so back to the cat so when I think about this with this dancing and just changing costumes that script itself is generic enough that I can actually use that same exact script on all the other sprites because they all have another costume and these costume I didn't put a specific costume name here it just says next costume. So I think I'm just going to copy and paste it to the other sprites. So I can actually just click on the script and you can see it's highlighted in yellow. Control C like in cat to copy it. Go on to the butterfly. Control V to paste it in. And let's see if it works for the butterfly. Works fine. Now I think I'll go to butterfly one and do the same thing. Control V to paste it in. Let's see if it works with a butterfly. That works very nicely. And now let's try the bug. 
Control V again. And the bug's changing his costumes. And let's do the same for the dog. Control V to paste that in. And test that out. And he's got his blinking crazy eyes. So now let's stop. So now let's see if the if the trigger when I receive, you know, these are the receiving broadcast messages. And remember the sending, there's only one sending broadcast message, which is the trigger message. And then each sprite has the receiving when it receives, what, what is it going to do? And you decide what these things do. So now let's play the whole thing. <laughs> and they're all crazy dancing. And that, my students, is how a very simple way that you can use broadcast messages in Scratch, in your programming, to trigger multiple actions to happen all at the same time.